Hey everybody, it's Dustin over at Geekmatics, and today we have an iPhone 6s that the client came in and said his phone is not charging. So the first thing we're gonna do here is actually plug it in, uh, ask him if there's been any liquid damage. He said no, he swore up and down, so we'll go ahead and plug it in and see what we get on the charger. So if you look here on the amp meter and at the screen, I've got no dead battery icon, nothing on the screen, and it is in fact not charging at all it's kind of fluctuating there from like five milliamps to 150 milliamps and then going back down so our next step here and just so we can quickly diagnose the phone in front of the client i really like to use what's called the tristar tester i've got this little blue one here i'll just plug it in and we will run the test now i, I like this test because it's accurate on the lines that it's uh, let me switch you over here it's accurate on the lines that it, it has the ability to test or that it's testing. All it does is measure a resistance drop on certain lines, and if, the, if, the, uh, if it's got an abnormal reading, it will bring that line back as a fail. Now, it is not 100% in the sense of if it passes TriStar, your issue's not TriStar. If it passes Doc, your issue's not Doc. It, it's not the way it works. It tests certain lines and tells you if they're different than what they should be or the readings are different than what they should be. So I like this test because it's something I can give my coworker. It's something I can do up in the front to show, uh, look, your TriStar is bad or hey, maybe your TriStar is bad. Maybe it's your charging port. Maybe it's your battery, but this test isn't 100% accurate. Now it says here, uh, battery is missing, um, but still passes the test. Now that, that, again, I'll tell the clients, I've seen that say that in the battery be brand new or just fine. So again, not 100% accurate with everything, but it's accurate for the things or the lines that it's testing. So the next step here is we're gonna actually go ahead and disconnect, or not disconnect, but connect DC power supply. So we'll unscrew the phone. Very, uh, looks like the seal has never been broken before. There we go. All right, so now we will go ahead and disconnect the battery. Okay, guys, I got to re record that bit because, as you see, OBS decided to make my sound like crap. So um, that's agitating. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my iPower Max, okay? I already confirmed that everything is set here the way I like it. Now I'm only plugging in the battery connector here because I have the prompt to boot option with the power button. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And as you see, right away I have a 500 milliamp drop before prompt to boot. Now sometimes what I see is if I have a, a short like that, I'm still able to turn on the phone. So let's go ahead and give it a shot, let's see. Prompt, 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 and we have Apple logo. So the phone does turn on. Now, uh, if you went to somebody that wasn't as thorough or maybe didn't have a DC power supply, they would have put a new battery in this device and had it turn on and say, hey, look, your issue is solved. It probably will charge now maybe a little bit. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Plug that in. And is it charging? Yes, it is actually charging now. Okay, so you can see, or it looks like it's charging that a, a, a technician that's not doesn't have something connected to DC power supply, they just fixed their issue with a new battery. Now we can see that we didn't because if, if we're gonna turn the device off here, you can see we have such a huge leakage before prompt to boot. So that's gonna be an issue, that's gonna be a short somewhere. All right, so it's always good uh, not to just plug in a new battery and see if the device works. It's good to actually fully test it with a DC power supply, okay? Because this client, if we would have just put a new battery in, they would have came back a couple of hours later after that battery died with such a huge uh, uh, current draw, and, and it would not, it would have been in the same condition, and they would have been like, oh, one more battery, maybe. And then the client probably would have gotten upset at that point. So let's go ahead. The next step is to take the board out of the housing and, uh, you know, find some heat, do a visual inspection, see what we can find. Okay guys, now that we've got the board out of the housing, we will go ahead and take the stickers off. So we can do a visual inspection on the board. Maybe I can, I'm so used to doing it with my microscope. I don't even know how to do it without it anymore. There's 
times 1. Now we will switch you guys over to the microscope camera so we can see if we see anything off. I don't see anything so far. Those look kind of weird, but I think that's just the overfill or underfill on top of them. Everything looks pretty good, actually. Let's flip up here. Yeah, everything looks good. Beautiful. All right. So the next step here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply power to the device again and see if we can get any heat off on the board with a 500 milliamp draw I would suspect we get something let's make sure this is off good and we don't even have to prompt to boot because this short is before the PMIC all right so now we're just gonna kind of feel on the back of the board that's normally where the shorts happen and see if we get any heat nothing yet Ooh, okay something's getting hot back here yeah, very, very hot. The Wi-Fi IC is very hot. And let me show you guys. Let's turn this off with some freeze spray. What is getting hot here? So first we'll get our freeze spray. Right, and prompt to boot. Look at that. The Wi-Fi IC itself is getting hot, all right? So that is where our short is gonna be located. And it looks like it's going to be specifically right here on our integrated circuit. Now, I have seen people deal with this where they actually dig into the Wi-Fi IC and replace the capacitor that goes bad there. I'm not gonna do that today. That I've never done that before. I, I always thought it was pretty cool when I see the pictures, but uh, what we're going to, to do is actually remove the bad IC. We're gonna put a new one on there. And in order to do that, we need to unbind Wi-Fi from the NAND, okay? So um, now what we're gonna have to do as of now is actually take off the NAND, put it into this JC program where you guys will be able to see that today as well and how I use that to unbind the, uh, the Wi-Fi from the NAND and um, then put the NAND back and uh, then the, a new Wi-Fi IC at that time will work, okay? Um, coming soon though, I've got a, um, an engineered cable coming for the iPhone where essentially you don't even need the program any, programmer anymore, you need a special cable and some new software that's come out and that will let you edit the NAND, unbind the Wi-Fi, the same type of thing as a JC programmer does. So it'll save us a lot of time where we don't have to remove the NAND. So that's gonna be great, I can't wait for that to come in. But as of right now, it's going to be a little bit longer repair because we have to remove both chips. All right. So, okay, guys. So what you missed is I just took a quick backup of this phone. I like to do that if the, if I'm able to get the phone to power on before I do board level work. I always like to uh, make a backup of it. All right. And uh, so the next step is I've just gotten the board heater out and cranking up the heat here, getting it up to temperature before we start attacking all of this underfill. We're going to start with the Wi-Fi. I see first and I like to start down on this side so we'll just wait here for another second or so and let this get up to temperature
So I just realized there was no audio during that last bit. So that will be fast forward through. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to use a much bigger nozzle. And we're gonna evenly heat the chip. Okay, I'm gonna put my little blade in here. And now we see the flux bubbling and bam, right off it comes. You saw that? Very, very easy. So the next step here is we're gonna first take a look at the pads and make sure that we don't have anything joined or, or connecting where they shouldn't and, and we do not. So what, what I'm gonna do just in the instance of the video is we're gonna test the device. Now, if we plug it in and we, um, before we prompt to boot, we should have zero current coming from the device. So let's go ahead and switch. All right, so we're gonna plug in our iPower Max. Again, we're gonna make sure we have it off while we're plugging it in. And again, we, uh, before we did I just had the bare board when we were testing as well, so we should have zero current as we uh, turn this on. So, and we do. Look, there it goes. That's perfect. And we'll go ahead and prompt to boot to make sure it's booting normally. And it is. So uh, essentially, normally what you Sorry about the cuts and everything. I've got to go help people and answer the phone. Um, but essentially, really what you want to do, um, instead of pulling it off the board heater as soon as you get one of the chips and the two that you need to remove, the other one's covered in underfill as well. So really the next thing would be to, instead of bringing the board down to temperature, would be to continue to and go and remove the NAND next while it's at that temperature and remove that underfill as well. I didn't do that because I, I wanted to show you guys that the difference between before and after we remove the Wi-Fi IC, okay? So next thing is we're actually gonna go ahead and put this back on the board heater and re remove NAND next and go from there. All right, the board's back up to the temperature here and we are going to go ahead and apply our top air. And again, just, just kind of picking at it, not really going in hard to see when it's ready to start being removed. kind of getting there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with our hot air. I did put a little piece of captain tape right above this to, so I don't damage damage it. And we're gonna find our entry point. I think I'm gonna go in very carefully right next to this glass. I'm not even sure what it is. So I'm gonna... Uh, now we're gonna apply the heat. Uh-oh, I think I knocked something I wasn't supposed to. But we will find out in a second if I did and what it was. Yep, that's something right there that we are gonna need. So we're gonna have to pull that from a donor. No worries. Just kind of went in with my blade a little the wrong way there, all right? 
All right, so the next step here is to go ahead and look at ZXW and see what my shaky hands just knocked off the board. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so just so you guys can see, it is going to be a capacitor here for PP, PP3VO NAND, okay? And uh, I'll tell you, I'm not even gonna replace that because PP3VO NAND has several caps on it. It is not gonna miss that tiny one Mm, I'm fighting myself. I might replace it. Let's see how I feel. Uh, I, li I like to put things back on the board. <laughs> okay, so the next step here is I'm going to reball the NAND to get it ready to go in the programmer. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to add flux to it. Okay, now I'm going to turn on my iron. I'm going to find my solder. Wait for that iron to get hot. We're gonna add solder to the to the NAND, okay? Make them all look nice and silver. Good. Okay. Now we are gonna clean our iron. I'm heck of a thing to have misplaced. We're going to grab some wick. Now, again, we got to be very, very careful with the wick, guys. It's an easy way, easy, easy way to pull pads, okay? So my method is, is I'm going to kind of bend it a little bit like that, if you can see. It's kind of bent. I'm going to put it down with my tweezers, and I'm going to touch it with my iron, and then I'm going to let go with it with my tweezers, and I'm going to go around with my iron. Now, if I pull up with my tweezers, it will pull pads. So you see I just brought the wick away with my iron instead of my tweezers. That way I don't pull any pads at all, okay? And we'll put that aside. And now we're gonna go ahead and clean up the NAND. It's ready for a fresh reball. All right, so we're cleaning the NAND now. I'm gonna grab our rubbing alcohol, our ISO, and remove all that junk. Okay, I had to fix some camera issues, full storage type things. So we'll continue cleaning our NAND here. Awesome. That's going to be good enough. What we're going to do next, Hello. find our stencil or answer the phone. All right, now that we have a uh, customer dealt with and phone taken care of, we can go ahead and start reballing this IC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the 183 solder paste. I'm going to get a paper towel as well. I'm just going to smear it on the paper towel and dry it out a little bit. And I do this because if it's wet, you'll, I, I, I tend to see join pads when I remove my stencil. So now we'll get it back on my hand. And then we will go ahead and stay in place, I see. There we go. Now we'll go ahead and remove the stencil and see if we have perfect pads underneath. Hopefully we do. First time. Yay. Looks beautiful down there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, and what, like I said, if I didn't dry it up in my paper towel like that, uh, I would have had joined pads there when I removed my stencil. And that's just because it's a little too wet. And that's the effect you get. Now we'll turn on our hot air to reball it make those solder balls become one and make sure we have grip of the IC and come up here a little bit 
and then we'll go down in. And you want to start at one corner and just kind of make them all go in line. Just like that. That looks good. And what we'll do is we'll clean off all of our solder balls all around the IC, but we'll make sure that that looks pretty even, and it does. It looks good. Oops, you guys can't see. Bring it back here a little bit and do it again. And it'll look pretty. Pretty even. I know on the edge of the screen, but close enough. All right. So now I'm going to take my tip of my tweezers and just scrape those solder balls away. solder balls go away. Beautiful. No more solder balls on the side of the NAN. And we'll go ahead and clean up our mat so we don't get solder balls on the board by accident. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is get to play with the JC programmer. Okay, guys. So the next step, now you'll ha you'll see the JC Pro 1000S. That's the the hub station that I've used and then it's attached to the JC P7 okay that's the NAND programmer that you're gonna need for this model alright now okay sorry about the constant phone calls that's good business right alright anyway so we're gonna go ahead and turn on the JC what no we're not we're gonna put the NAND in first NAND in first and latch it in and now we have a green light telling me that I've got it in the right way and I'm gonna hold this for a couple of seconds to turn it on and alright so you'll see here if we click it says Wi-Fi not delete so if we click unbind Wi-Fi it will change to has delete and then Wi-Fi or unbind Wi-Fi success so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn off the programmer I'm gonna turn it back on and make sure that result stays the same should automatically change. There it goes. Okay, and you see here it says has delete. So perfect, that was a, su a success. Now we can put the new Wi-Fi C and NAND on the board. Okay. All right, guys. So the next. Okay, guys. So the next step here is we're going to go ahead and add some flux to the board. We are going to get some solder. Heat up iron. There we go. Just like we did on the NAND, we're going to, you know, pat all those pillows. We, we are going to wick them. So they are all nice and even, but I like to mix the solder before I, I wick them. Just a little bit more. Oop, not that much more. That's too much. Come on. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right, now we're going to clean our iron and we're going to go for our wick. That went flying. Okay. 
Okay. And again, we're going to go with the same method. Uh, we're going to bend it a little bit. All right. And then we're going to just kind of drop it on the board with our tweezers. All right. Remember, just like before, we're going to set it on the board. All right, and we pick up the uh, wick with our iron so we don't have to use the tweezers, all right? And now those are all wicked. Those are all looking pretty good. That new nan will sit there flushly. I'm going to clean all my flux off there. Some more. Ooh, don't throw them everywhere, but right, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, because we're going to add more flux to the board. Now this time we're going to be very moderate with our flux, and we're going to—I like to smear it around. A kind of a thin layer all around where the NAND is. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll go ahead and put the NAND on the board. Make sure we're positioning it the right way. UXW will tell us. All right. All right. So that is somewhat in the right position there. Okay. So I'm gonna go with the, with my airflow that way. tip on my wrong tip on my iron remember I'm gonna start way up here I'm gonna slowly move back down You saw the NAND jump. That means it's in position. I'm going to give it a few nudges, and it's good. And we are going to let that cool a little bit. All right, guys. So the next step that what I'm going to do is I'm going to test and make sure it still boots into iOS. Now, I do this because it is easier if let's say something goes wrong after I completed the repair and I put both chips on at the same time it's just easier for me to diagnose um, if there's an issue right away with, with which part I did so I'm gonna go ahead and get the iPower Max and grab a screen Okay, now we'll connect our DC power supply. And prompt to boot. Can you see that, guys? Looks like it's starting. Okay, we have Apple logo. That's a good sign. Let me just 
wait for this to boot into iOS. And again, I just do this to, so I know if I have an issue with my NAND or Wi-Fi, if I do have an issue after I get it going. Good, it's booted. I have touch, awesome. Cool. So we'll go ahead and the next step is to put the Wi-Fi IC back on the board or the new Wi-Fi IC anyway. Now, same type of process, we're going to put flux on the board. We're going to wake up our iron. Now, the cen center here is pretty much all ground. I think all of these pins are ground, actually. So we'll go around here and get the outside as well. Be very careful not to touch any of the ICs on the outside. Come on, come back alive. There you are. There we go. Now I'm making a mess. All oh, these guys need to come back alive. Stop being stubborn. I'm going to need more flux here in a minute come back to that area do this side and I'm lightly scraping on these pads to, to make them like fluffy pillows again all right now we're gonna need flux here come on there we go Beautiful. Oh, one more. Awesome. Cool. Now, I'm not going to wick these pads. I'm just going to leave them like that. I'm going to clean off my flux. As long as there's no nothing really sticking out or pointing up, then that's going to be okay. And what I'll do is I'll get rid of, you see, the, the solder I got on the joint there. Or on the the bracket. I think that's three MacBooks in that box. Three MacBooks. All right, more con swabs. And we are gonna bathe this board really nice once we're done to make sure it looks as good as new. And we're going to look at it kind of from the side here, see if we have anything sticking up and we don't, which is good. All right, now we're going to put this board aside for a little bit and we are going to get our IC ready. Now, I do have a new IC here, but I do not like the way that they are reballed. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do that myself, reball this IC here. So maybe right with you. Okay, guys. So I am gonna go ahead and wick the uh, the new IC. Okay. Can't tell me how to live my life. The same method, kind of bent, and I'm gonna set her down. I'm not talking to her now because I'm actually holding my breath. The amount of smoke that makes is unbearable. I need to get a fume extractor in here. But now that looks pretty good, nice and wicked. We'll clean her off and go ahead and go through the reballing process. With this one, I, I will actually leave my stencil on the chip when I heat it up because they're, these uh, pads are so close together that I don't know if that method will work the way I want it to. Uh, 
stop running away from me. Beautiful. Nice and wick pads on a new Wi-Fi I see. Awesome. We'll bring that down and we'll grab our stencil. Be right with you. That's the six. I'm actually gonna have to grab the right stencil this time because I'm sure it's different from the one I was using. Yes, success. Here we go. And this is what happens when you don't clean your stencil. I'm gonna have to take a quick second to clean this real quick and I'll Okay, we've got our stencil cleaned, ready to go. You guys are just a tad out of focus, aren't you? There we go. Okay, now we got our stencil cleaned. We'll go ahead and set it on the board, or on the IC. Maybe, if it will stay, stay straight. There we go. You guys have any parts supply on here? I do not. No. Okay, so that's now that that's in place, we'll go ahead and grab our solder paste and it will be the same exact process as last time if I can find it don't want to take all of it but we'll take just a, a little gunk and we'll put her on the paper towel and kind of just tap her dry a little bit and then scoop her up that's going to be enough oh yeah that's going to be plenty perfect okay, and then I take my other finger and I just kind of wipe away right wipe away the access my clean fingers I'm running out of clean fingers there we go all right now we're going to come in with lower temperature we don't want to bend our stencil I have the wrong tip but I'm already in position so we're going to make this work all right we're gonna come up here, kind of heat the entire stencil up. This is really the wrong tip to be doing this. This is not gonna work. Oh, camera down. Oh, but look at that. That will work is the way with the way I do the nans. So that's that's perfect. Just because our stencil flexed up there, that was the wrong tip on my heat gun. Once that cools off, I am going to change it and do this properly. Okay, guys, now that we got the right tip on our hot air gun, I'm going to leave it like that because you can see that's actually a pretty good reball without even the stencil. I've never done it that way. That's pretty, pretty cool. I might try it again that way on this. All right, so we're going to start up here, and we're going to slowly come down towards this side and let them all form in a row like that. That's what we're looking for. Beautiful. And we will check our work. That looks pretty good. Okay. Do this way as well. Awesome sauce. Okay. Really good reball, it looks like. Now we're going to go back to our foam. We're going to put this aside for a quick minute. Put that over there. Bring back our foam. clean that up in a minute. So what we're going to do is add flux. Not terribly much. I think I added too much there. And I say too much because I don't want the, the IC to float away. So I'm going to smear it around just like I did with the NAN. Yeah, there's a lot of flux here. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and put the IC on the board in the correct orientation. Uh, which I don't know off the top of my head, actually. I'll take a quick look at ZXW to confirm what I think I know. And okay, perfect. We 
gonna knock this into some, some now, somewhat correct position. And then we're gonna change our nozzle again. I think that one's gonna be too big. Yeah, we don't wanna use that. Where is the other one? All right, so the same thing, we're gonna start way up here, bring you guys into view. And you can see it's knocking around, but I'm all the way up here, so that's it's not too bad. It's not like if I was close to that, would have flown off the board. Now I'm gonna get closer, and I'm starting to to circle the chip. You see how the chip got in, knocked into position there? Now I'm gonna wedge it on both sides. That's good. Oop, still moving. That's not good. I don't know if this is gonna work the first time. That moves a lot too much in my opinion. All right, that's on there now, but we probably have something bridged. So we will have to redo that perfect reball. That's unfortunate. We'll see though. We'll see what happens. Let this. So the next step here guys is to go ahead and connect DC power supply and see if we're gonna get a short from that Wi-Fi IC. I think we will because that was a pretty big jump, but we're gonna find out here. Okay, make sure that it's off, it is. Plug it in, good. And now we're gonna go ahead and turn on. Okay, that's what we expect to see, good. And prompt to boot. And we should be booting now. I don't see a short, guys, which is, a, I think I just moved something, that's why it happened there. Let's try this again. Prompt to boot. Thank you, brother. I, again, just to initiate the game, it's U17, 16, 17, so if you have some issues, then go ahead and live over. Okie dokie. Thank you so okay, much. It looks like it's booting there. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in the housing and see if we get Wi Fi. Again, I have my doubts. Okay, guys, I've just got it thrown in the housing. Now, I do still have it connected to DC power supply instead of their battery because of this initial point in testing. I would like to see, if this, I look at DC power supply as life support in a sense, and I would like to see how it's acting on that before I go ahead and connect a battery. Okay, so we see we have Apple logo. While we're waiting for that, I'll pull up the client's passcode. That was a pretty big jump there, so if this works, I'd be pretty amazed. Okay, we're up. Now I'm going to turn you guys away. Or... All right, we're in. We're just going to jump to the settings before I show you the screen. Okay. I hope I didn't show you the name. All right, so we see Wi-Fi not connected. That's a good sign. Instead of being grayed out, normally I'll just say off. I don't have any antennas connected right now, so I'd be amazed if it picked up mine, and it does, perfect. So now what we'll do is we'll move to the next part of testing, which is to connect it to the battery and see if it charges the client's battery. Okay, remember guys, it was, I believe, fluctuating before. Now we'll see what we get. We had no, no image on screen, so we'll plug it in and it is starting to pull 800 milliamps, almost 900 milliamps, and we do have image on the screen. So now we'll let this sit and it, we should expect a little bit more from the current, but I'm sure it'll get there as the battery uh, actually kicks out of almost completely dead. All right, so let's have All right guys, the Apple logo just showed up and now you can see it is charging. We'll get the glare out at 1.2 amps so that's good that's what we'd expect from an iPhone 6s and we will go ahead and check Wi-Fi again before we clean the board and make the board look like we've never touched it they have battery they do have the battery mm, yeah, I don't know what it is the the I would trust them they're normally pretty good with their parts I forgot the password already so we'll pull that back up Okay. Uh, they have lifetime warranty on everything. Yeah, but on the computer battery, you think they're gonna have lifetime warranty too? Well, I 
Mm-hmm. That's my thought. I would just I, again. I still don't have anything hooked up, but they're checking Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi still works. Bluetooth is on. I don't have anything Bluetooth right now. I can pair. So we'll check. Oh, that's something around here, and it seems to be working as well. Cool. Okay, guys. So this is kind of what the board looks like. Get you in focus after I clean it. You can see it. You know, you can slightly tell I've been here, especially the missing capacitor but uh, not terribly much by the flux, almost all the flux is gone, okay? And I do that simply because uh, if this phone comes back six months later with, uh, for a warranty issue, I don't wanna see the board have that damage that you see from flux after it's been sitting a long time. So the board looks good. It didn't look like anything got overheated up here. Um, all of that looks good and normal. So we'll put this back in the housing, screw it up, and I like to test these for about 30 to 40 minutes before I give them back to the clients. Okay guys, we just got the phone put back together, all the screws in it, sealed up again. We're gonna test Wi-Fi and make sure that Wi-Fi is 100%. Charging is now normal. Okay, the guy has cellular data, that's good. And we will put his password in. On. And Wi Fi should be. There we go. I should have a lot of networks around me. I do. That's what I would expect to see. Awesome. Okay. So, like I said, I'm going to leave this sit here and charge up a little bit. Make sure I'm not getting any heat that I shouldn't. I don't think so because that's what the DC power supply would have told us if it was getting hot. All right, because that would indicate a short. Heat would indicate a short. All right, everybody, just a quick review of what we did today. We had an iPhone 6S that came in that had symptoms of no charging. It wasn't charging. I really like this example because it is another example of how a short can give you something that looks like no charging and how I ruled out no charging without actually replacing charging port and battery. And I also showed one of the great things about the DC power supply and, and being in depth because if I would have just changed the battery on this device, yes, it would have worked right away, but the client would have came back a couple of hours later pretty upset that he's now having the same exact issue and make us look like we didn't know what we were doing. So I'm, glad, I'm really glad we tested this device thoroughly. And uh, as always, I hope you learned something.